be lowered to avoid damaging the stem's threads. A nut and washer are placed above the tool to hold it in place. Your facility may have other types of tools used when lapping, so be sure to check this out with your supervisor. Notice our lapping tool has a black line on it. We'll see how this line is used to orient the lapping tool later in the procedure. After inserting the top nut and washer, wrenches are used to tighten the handle on the stem. At this point, our valve is set up to do the lapping with medium grade compound. Remember, when preparing a valve for lapping, use the proper kind of lapping tool for your valve and be sure to apply lapping compound evenly on the plug. In the next segment, we'll see how to perform the lapping procedure. But now, stop and review this material. In the last segment, we saw how to prepare our globe valve for lapping. In this segment, we'll see how to do the lapping. Let's join our technician as he starts lapping our valve with the medium grade compound he applied previously. Following the manufacturer's instructions, our technician moves the stem in short back and forth turns about eight to 10 times. Then the stem is lifted and moved 90 degrees and the turns are repeated. This turning procedure is done four times. This way, the entire sealing surface is lapped evenly. The technician takes note of the position of the black mark on our lapping tool to help keep track of the stem's position. As he is turning, the plug inside is moving against the valve seat and the surfaces are being ground so they'll mate well together. When turning the stem and plug, you don't need to press down very hard on the handle. Just let the weight of the plug, the stem, and the handle do the work. After completing the lapping with the medium strength compound, the bonnet assembly will be removed. This is done so the plug and seat can be cleaned in preparation for the lapping with fine grade lapping compound. To remove the bonnet from the body, the body stud nuts are removed. The bonnet, stem, and lapping tool together are lifted straight off the valve body with care taken not to damage the plug by hitting the inside of the body. The medium grade compound is still on this plug. This compound contains bits of metal accumulated during the lapping. It is important to get all of the medium grade lapping compound off the plug so the fine grade compound can be applied to a clean surface. The seat area should also be thoroughly cleaned of medium grade compound in preparation for the next step. Inspect the seat area to see that it looks clean. There should be a shiny polished area all the way around the opening in the seat ring. Now we're going to repeat the procedure using the fine grade lapping compound. The technician checks the container and makes sure he's using the correct compound. Just as we did with the medium grade compound, we'll use a brush to apply the fine grade compound. The technician takes care to apply it at evenly spaced points around the seating surface of the plug. This compound is used to put a finer finish on the seat and plug. This final polishing provides a mating surface that assures a good seal. The lapping procedure is the same as we saw for the medium compound. After thoroughly cleaning the surface, the technician will visually inspect the seat and plug. Other types of checks are described in your text. When you do lapping in your plant, be sure to use the correct types and amount of lapping compound. Be 
sure to turn the stem and plug according to your manufacturer's instructions. And be sure to thoroughly clean all lapping compound from the plug and seat area in between lapping steps and after you're finished. Special precautions may be required when lapping particular metals like stainless steel to prevent damage to the internal parts of the valve. Be sure to check your procedure for the correct lapping compound to use on the particular valve you're working on. In the next segment, we'll see how to reassemble this valve after lapping, and we'll see some special procedures used when replacing the gasket. For now, stop and review this material. After lapping, your facility procedures may call for flushing or vacuuming the valve before reassembly. Let's join our technician as he reassembles our valve. Our valve has a special type of gasket called a spiral wound gasket. These gaskets are designed to have more resilience than some other types of gaskets. This means that they can adjust easily to changes in operating conditions like pressure or temperature. They are designed to hold up better under vibration. Before the new gasket is reinstalled, the gasket surface between the body and bonnet can be wiped again using a lint-free cloth. After the gasket groove is clean, we're ready to insert the spiral wound gasket. Our procedures call for us to replace gaskets whenever connections are broken. The technician inspects it to make sure it's not warped or dented in any way. The gasket is placed in the gasket groove. It fits right into place. The technician gently presses the gasket down to make sure it's properly set. The next step is to reinsert the plug through the bonnet. The technician pushes the stem through carefully to avoid doing any damage to it. When he sees the top end of the stem come through, he pulls the plug back against the bonnet. This way he can grasp the valve and hold the stem by its middle section, and he can avoid damage to the threads at the top of the stem that could be caused by touching them. After these pieces are put back together, he gently lowers the bonnet onto the body. He takes care to match up the match marks he made earlier so that the parts are properly aligned. After the bonnet is installed on the body, the technician gently lowers the stem and plug into place you'll be able to feel the plug fit right into the seat. At this point, we're going to get ready to tighten the body stud nuts. In preparation for the tightening, the body studs are lubricated with an anti-seize compound. Use of the compound helps prevent seizing, which will make future disassemblies easier. And this compound helps prevent rusting, and it will make the reassembly of the bonnet easier. Make sure that you cover all the threads of all the studs. This process takes a little while, so let's go on. The body stud nuts have been put on hand tight and are now ready to be torqued. There are special torquing requirements when spiral wound gaskets are used. Our technician has checked his manufacturer's instructions for the required torque values and tightening sequence for this valve. He also checks that the torque wrench has been recently calibrated. A spiral wound gasket makes a dependable seal between connections as long as it's torqued in place correctly. Too little torque on a spiral wound gasket would result in a poor seal and possible leaking. Too much torque could deform the gasket and cause a poor seal. 
The correct torque on a spiral wound gasket must be reached in stages to prevent damage to the gasket. For this valve, the first torquing stage is approximately one-third of the required torque. Since our desired final torque is 30 foot-pounds, our first wrench setting is 10 foot-pounds. In addition to torquing in stages, it's important to follow the required torquing sequence so that pressure is applied evenly. This prevents warping of the gaskets. In this case, we'll use the same crisscross pattern we used when disassembling the valve. The technician will torque in three stages, applying approximately a third of the torque each time. Now that the bonnet and body of this globe valve are reassembled, we're ready to reinsert the contents of the packing assembly. Before we do that, a cover is put on the threads of the stem for protection. This cover prevents damage to the new packing rings when they're inserted over the stem. This is important because any nicks or scratches on the packing could interfere with the packing's ability to seal. Since this valve is being reassembled now for use in the process, new packing is used. When inserting packing, put the rings on one at a time so they can be inserted straight into the stuffing box. The type of packing we're using is called split rings. One feature of split ring packing is that it can be moved apart and inserted at the middle portion of the stem when removal of the actuator and packing flange is impractical. We'll see how to insert packing that way later. But now, since this valve is disassembled, we're able to slide the packing completely down from the top. This practice keeps stress on the rings to a minimum. When you're inserting split ring packing, be sure that you offset the split in the rings from one another. If the splits were lined up directly over each other, the rings might not seal properly. When reinstalling packing, make sure you insert the proper amount of packing rings for your valve. And if your assembly has a spacer, remember to put that in, in its proper place. After new packing is inserted, the final pieces of the packing assembly are put on in the reverse order of their disassembly. First, the packing follower is inserted over the stem. Then the packing flange goes on top of the follower. And then the packing flange stud nuts are reinstalled. The packing flange stud nuts are not tightened at this point. They'll be tightened after the actuator is reinstalled. The actuator is reinstalled onto the valve body in the reverse order from its removal. The indicator disc and nuts are reinserted. The actuator is hoisted down carefully. And the drive nut is reinstalled. The actuator's indicator plate and dust cover are not reinstalled yet. There's a test we'll be doing called a leak check. And these parts must remain off the actuator to do the test. So we've seen how to reassemble a globe valve after lapping. When you do this, be sure to install the proper type and amount of packing. And when tightening body studs, be sure to follow proper torquing procedures. If you're using split ring packing, be sure to offset the splits on each successive ring of packing. In the next segment, we'll see how to test a reassembled valve for leaks. At this time, stop and review the information in your text. In the previous segment, we saw how to properly reassemble a globe valve that was overhauled. When a valve is reassembled after an overhaul, it should be tested for leakage before being returned to service. Let's see one way to conduct a leak test. Our technician is using a pneumatic comparator and a hydrostatic tester. The pneumatic comparator is connected to an air supply at the test bench. 
and it's connected to the valve's actuator, so the air supply can be used to provide the power for necessary movement of the actuator during the leak test. The hydrostatic tester is connected to the inlet piping so water can be sent to and pressurized in the valve during the test. The technician begins by sending an air signal from the pneumatic comparator to the actuator. He's watching the stem's movement to make sure it moves all the way through to the closed position. And at the same time, he's looking to see that it's operating with a smooth motion. Our stem does move smoothly, which means it's operating correctly. If you see jerking motions of the stem when you do this procedure, it could mean that the packing is adjusted too tightly. If that happens, adjust the packing until the stem moves up and down smoothly. At this point, you can adjust the actuator.